tonight on 60 Seconds. We sit down with an innkeeper who says he was harassed non-stop by a detective who just would not leave him alone. He just kept showing up. Oh. It didn't matter where I was. Somehow, he even showed up in Carcosa. The innkeeper, whose name shall remain anonymous, says he was even harassed before this very show in the green room. You know, I'm just going to tell it like it is, and... Oh! Oh! He's right there! Don't you see him right there? Doing my laundry, underground labyrinths, desolate islands surrounded by... Raging storms, my house after being invaded by ghouls, even in a other dimension between time and space. He just doesn't give up. After the interview, the innkeeper said he had a similar problem with a mob enforcer. We reached out for comment, but did not receive a response before the airing of the program. Coming up, a homeless man named Pete stays overnight in a house infested by ghouls. We will be running through the entire Return to the Night of the Zealot campaign using Ashcan Pete. In today's episode, we'll be running specifically through the gathering. We'll be using Ashcan's official deck building options and specifically uh, I've constructed a Desperate Pete build with a little bit of a Dark Horse kind of sprinkled in there. We'll see how that works. Uh, in the few test plays that I ran it through it did very very well so hopefully we do very well in this. This deck in particular leverages Pete's already low sanity score and uh, forces him to take some horror using some forbidden knowledge uh, to gain a, a few re resources when he has Dark Horse out so he can play some of the cards that do cost a little bit of resources and also um, take some horror damage in order to decrease his sanity low enough for him to play the desperate skill cards as well as improve his bonuses by playing fight or flight so Hopefully uh, this uh, does well in this scenario. This scenario can be particularly nasty with Rotting Remains. If a, fail, a check like that is failed, it can be devastating. Uh, so this scenario is not a guarantee. And especially with the return to, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult than the standard one. So we'll see how it runs through. And for those who are not familiar uh, with Pete, you do get to start with Duke in play, which is very helpful. Our Investigate and Combat will already be at an advantage because of him being in play. What is going on? It is late at night. Pete is holed up in the study of the house he is staying at, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into his research, he hears the sound of strange chanting coming from his parlor down the hall. At the same time, he hears dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floors. As Pete and Duke leap to investigate, the door to the study of the house they were staying at vanishes before their eyes, leaving behind a strange gateway to another part of the house. There must be a reason why this is happening. And welcome back to Twisted Tentacle in solo playthroughs. As much as I have had a great time recording the All Purple All the Time team running through the Forgotten Age, it is quite an enjoyable campaign. It has been pretty tough doing multi-handed playthroughs. Recording four-handed and being able to get it on the camera and the shots is difficult. And post-production is just a gargantuan amount of work. So it's nice to get back to basics and going back to single uh, solo player uh, is definitely a nice change of pace for me. So I'm glad I'm getting back to this. We're going to run Pete 
through the entire Return to the Night of the Zealot campaign uh, solo and uh, see how he does with this deck. Uh, some playthroughs that I've done on t on the test uh, runs have have done very very well with this deck. So we'll see how it goes. And this is a very nice opening hand. Um, definitely like the fire axe in the very beginning and the fight or flight having that. Ooh, a nice. Okay. So not bad, not bad. Uh, could have been a little bit better if I had a dark horse um, in there or maybe you know the rabbit's foot, but that's okay. This is not a bad opening hand at all. I'll take it. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, for my weakness, I did pull Hypochondria, which is honestly a really, really bad one to get for this type of deck. But we'll just have to play around it and uh, deal with it when it comes around. All right, we are ready to begin. Let's reveal the opening location. Here we go. It has been investigating the strange events occurring at Arkham for several months now. His desk is covered in newspaper articles, police reports, and witness accounts. The door to the house where Pete is staying has vanished, leaving in its wake a gateway to another part of the house. Three shroud, one clue. It has a tool action ability. Draw three cards. Only the lead investigator can activate this ability. When an enemy attempts to spawn at a location, Place that location on the map and place the enemy there. This is different from the original um, version of the gathering, where if an enemy tries to spawn, it fizzles and doesn't spawn at all. It goes right to the discard pile. And Pete will begin his investigation by revealing some forbidden knowledge. And uh, he will go ahead and get that placed on the table and uh, begin his investigations with that forbidden knowledge. Should we find ourselves uh, short on cash, we can tap into some of that knowledge and get some uh, additional resources at the cost of a horror. All right. And in addition to that, um, Pete will be pulling out the fire, fire axe that he brought along with him. He's staying in this house, but he's not sure who owns it. And he just brought an axe just in case he needs to defend himself in case someone freaks out. Duke is going to start sniffing around, and we'll be heading into the bedroom. A shadow dances across the floor beneath the bedroom door as Pete approaches. The bedsheets are tattered, and a strange symbol is drawn in the fabric. Blood pools at the foot of the closet door, and Pete can hear something chewing inside. A two shroud one clue location because we are using duke to sniff around into the bedroom we get to investigate it at a uh, score of um four and uh we get to move and investigate right away as one single action so here we go four versus a two it's going to be a zero nice so we get that clue right away Having a dog help you sniff around definitely helps. Uh, so that ends our turn. We finish our turn at the bedroom. We grab our first card, overpower, okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and gain a resource. And add the first doom to the agenda and pull our first encounter card. Here we go. And it is to quote a channel that I really, really enjoy called Out of Ammo, Out of Time. We have just pulled a rotting remains. And we have to test a three willpower for each point you fail by. Take one horror. Let's see what we can pull out of here. We'll take the straight shot. It's going to be a four versus three. And the chaos bag tells us that we pull a zero nice so it looks like the rotting remains we're not so scared of pete he's used to seeing a lot of crazy stuff being on the street all right so we're going to investigate um it's going to be moving right over back into the study it's going to be a four versus three duke thought he smelled something bad in the bedroom but it must be in the study so we're going right back in there and investigating there so let's see what he can find 
and it says that we pull a oh auto fail well duke you need to work on that uh that nose of yours there that did not work out so well all right so we're gonna end up going over here to the bathroom maybe something smells bad there bathroom as you approach the bathroom door the weight of the putrid unnatural air causes you to gag the guest bathroom looks as though it hasn't been cleaned in years a viscous green liquid fills the bathtub in the far corner of the room and mold has grown around the walls okay so one shroud one clue it looks like uh, you could lose all your remaining actions in investigating here if you pull a bad symbol so it definitely could slow you down not too bad though one shot is not bad at all two versus one and we'll let the chaos bag decide what the outcome is here and it says minus one looks like we get it and no special symbol so we don't lose all of our actions and um, Pete is done with his round we'll go ahead and ready Duke and um, draw a card and gain a resource okay Peter Silvestri nice the two Pete's and the Duke. All right. And now we'll add another Doom and draw our next encounter card. So it looks like we get Rotting Remains again. All right. Not a terribly hard test for Pete to pass, but if, if we get an autofill, this could devastate us. Um, earlier I mentioned Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I highly recommend you watch their channel. Um... Basically, he does playthroughs of only the gathering, at least for right now, and he does it kind of like a, a tournament style. So each investigator gets their starter decks that FFG recommends as a starter deck, and he tries to run it through the gathering and see how well they do. Check out the channel. It's really, really good. All right, so we'll see what the cast bag has to say about this. It's going to be a four versus three. Do we commit anything? Yeah, we'll just run it. We could use the horror anyways. So let's see. A zero. So we pass. Very cool. All right. Pete is investigating this house that he's been staying at. And it looks a lot different than what he remembers. Maybe he had a little bit much to drink. So four versus three to investigate the um, study. Okay, and we get, okay, that's a tablet token, so minus two, uh, that's a failure, that's too bad. Well, um, I think we're going to bring in our friend, Peter Silvestri, so we'll pay the resources and bring him up. Hey Pete, come hang out with me in this house. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know, this house seems to be infected with ghouls. Peter Silvestri, Pete's friend, is going to come hang out and help him investigate. First we'll investigate the location, it's going to be a um, um, 2 versus 3. And let's see, oh actually, you know what, no, let's, let's draw a card instead. So, draw a card and it looks like we get overpower. That's good. So this deck has a lot of skill cards. Um, these are going to help us with individual checks. I'm not scared to use them because we get a lot more. And it looks like I got a um, leather coat. That'll help with some damage absorption. Um, but right now it's time for the agenda to move. I think it's going fairly well right now. We've got a lot of skill cards and that's a good thing. Let's advance the agenda. Lapse in time. The house in which Pete is staying continues to change before his very eyes. The walls have decayed, and the ground in many rooms have turned to dirt. And it's almost as if he has been transported somewhere else entirely. Although every now and again, he recognizes elements of the former house in which he was. Rise of the ghouls. The floor beneath Pete is giving way. And he sees a vast network of tunnels twisting in the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. He 
probably doesn't want to be here once they do. Things are going okay, but with the agenda moving, we need to speed things up a little bit. We really need to get this clue out of here. I have a desperate card that requires horror, but guess what? This agenda moving requires me to take two horror. Well, I have a choice. Discard a card or take two horror, which I'll, I'll gladly take the two horror so that it will allow me to use all the desperate cards that are in this deck. All right, and now we will uh, pull our encounter card. And it looks like it's a ghoul minion. Uh, two combat, two health creature with two evade. Not bad at all. Pretty easy to kill. Uh, we'll just uh, handle this guy pretty quickly and get that clue. I want to save Duke to get the clue, so I'm thinking I can hit him with the fire axe twice and kill him. And then nab the clue this round. Um, maybe, a, maybe a bad idea. If I attack him with Duke, I can kill him in one action, but... I need Duke for the investigation, so that's that's my train of thought here. So let's fire Act 6 versus 2. And the Chaos Bag tells us it is a... Nice, look at that. And Pete hacks this thing away with the fire axe, and he swings, hurting it in the shoulder. And Peter Silvestri is just in shock. What are you doing, Pete? What are you doing with that fire axe? They're ghouls, man. I'm telling you, we gotta kill them! Alright, so we'll do it again. We're gonna hack again, doing another 6 versus 2. So this will take him out, and then we'll be able to investigate with Duke. So, oh my god, okay. Minus 4, that's good enough. Scared me there for a second. Ghoul is dead. Alright, so now we've got our final action. We'll go ahead and use Duke with a 4, so that'll help us investigate. And I think we're gonna use our desperate skill card. Desperate Search gives us four extra intellect. So now we're going eight versus three. So should be easy to get this uh, this clue here. And we pull another. Wow, these Elder Signs keep coming up. I get to ready Duke, but that was my last action, so it doesn't really help much. Unfortunately, I really do wish that I had gotten that later on against the Ghoul Priest. But, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll happen still anyways. So we got the last clue. We'll go ahead and draw our card. And lucky. Nice. Very good card. Glad to have it. Oops. <laughs> Knocking things over. So we get our resource. Oh, boy. Um, we um, get our resource. And we have uh, lucky in hand. We are on a good trajectory here. And we get grasping hands. Grasping hands. As out of ammo, out of time would say. Test three. Um, agility. Or take some damage for each point you fail by. That's not good. So let's do um, four versus three. It's going to be a difficult check. And the chaos bag says, oh, nice. Look at that. Another elder sign. Wow. Wow. All these elder signs just coming out at this time. The most I pulled in one game was with Carolyn. Actually, for a video that I did on this channel. <laughs> And I think it was like six in one game. It was crazy. Somehow Pete has ended up in a completely different part of his house. How did he end up here? One shroud, no clues, and we cannot take draw actions in this location. So that's pretty important because that is something that we do like to do with this deck. But that's okay. We're just here to spend our clues and advance the act. Turn ends, we... Not turn ends, what am I talking about? Spend our clues and let's go ahead and advance the act. All right. Breaking the wall. The layout of the home is vastly different from its usual structure. Somehow the guest hall seems to have looped around on itself and Peter's stuck with no way to enter the main hallway near the front of the house. Pete notices that the wall between the guest bedroom and the bathroom is rotted and stained with what appears to be old blood. With no other way to proceed, Pete has no choice but to burst through the weak, rotted wall. Okay, so the investigator has to test four willpower. For each point that we fell by, we have to discard a random card from our hand, and we place location into play. A glowing barrier blocks the path to the parlor. As Pete moves towards it, intense heat forces him back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, 
He tosses it at the barrier and watches in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. Cool. So now we have our objective. We have to grab a few more clues. We reveal some locations here. There's one location we're not going to be able to get to, which is the cellar. Um, and with Return to the Night of Zealot, we actually get to pick the cellar and the attic from two different options, and they could lead to different things. So let's go ahead and reveal this location. A hole in the wall. I need this like I need a hole in my wall. The walls of your house are spattered with mud, and your hardwood floor is gone. Your place with a dirt path. Okay, one shroud, no clues. We'll go ahead and put that in place. And we still have to do that willpower test uh, from advancing the axe. So that's going to be a four versus four. I have uh, some good cards in my hand, but I don't mind. I, I have a decent willpower. It'll be a straight test. If I lose some cards, it's not a huge deal. So I'm not going to commit anything to it. Minus four. Oh my God. <laughs> that's not good. Wow, that was rough. Okay, so, um, yeah, I guess we have to uh, discard four cards. I think in this case, I'm going to commit a lucky, because I'd rather lose lucky and two other cards than lose four cards. I didn't expect to lose by that much, so it is what it is. We'll go ahead and play lucky. They are a resource, and um, lucky, basically, if you fail... The skill test, you get plus two value for the test. So instead of failing by four, we only failed by two. So now we have to discard two random cards from our hand. Because we're supposed to discard one from uh, one for each point that we failed by. So um, here we go. And let's see what we pull out. And oh no. <laughs> oh my god, two cards that... <laughs> the skill cards would have been more replaceable than these. Darn it, oh well. Okay, so now we have to reveal our random cards. Not reveal, but put put out. So we get to pick from these two at random, and we'll place this right here. And then um, we put the parlor into play. And then we also have to put the um, at the uh, cellar from two random ones. So oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> let's pick this at random here again. So, um, here we go. Put that into play. And then we put the parlor. There it is. All right, the rest of the locations go to the side. And I'll put the location connectors just so it's a quick and easy way to, to know which way goes where. We'll move these to the side here. Make a little more room for the camera to see the, the scenario. Okay. And for those who haven't seen my other videos, these location connectors are from Sick Dave. If you go to BoardGameGeek.com and search for Sick Dave, he sells these. Um, he's in, I believe, in the UK, but he'll ship anywhere in the world. You'll just have to pay a little bit more shipping, which I did. They're amazing, and he's got a bunch of different types, so highly recommended. So here's where um, the scenario kind of can be done pretty straightforward. We'll use Duke to move into the um, attic. And we'll reveal the attic and... Smell of rotten meat assault your nostrils as you approach the attic stairs. The bloody carcass of a malformed beast swings from a meat hook chained to the ceiling. Blood drains slowly from the carcass, dripping onto a small barrel. And we take a horror from the site automatically just for going in. It's one shroud, two clues. Duke moves in there first, or uh, Pete moves in there. Investigate using a four versus one. We use Duke so we get to investigate it in the same action as the move. And we'll take our horror for the site that we just saw. So this should be an easy investigation check. And oh my god, another Elder Sign. I think what's that at? Four or five of them? This might be coming close to beating my record here. So Duke readies, and uh, we'll use him again. Four versus one. And the chaos bag says, we pull a, oh, cultist. That's a minus one, and that means we succeed. We get our clue. Move this a little more this way. Okay. All right. So that ends our turn, and we will now draw a card. Um, hoping for some more skill cards, because 
we're reaching near the end of the scenario and skill cards are fast. They don't cost resources. We just need to be quick uh, moving forward from here to the end. And okay, that's a desperate skill card and that's not bad. Can come in handy for a test from the encounter deck. That's okay. Get a resource and let's add a doom to the agenda. And then we will grab our next encounter card. And let's see what it says. Another rotting remains. This is the third one already. Okay, well, we got just the thing. We got just the thing. We're going to say our prayers along with uh, Peter Silvestri and our dog. And it'll be an eight versus a three. And the pull from the cast bag says that we get a skull. Because there are no ghoul enemies in our location, that is a zero. So we succeed. Very cool. Okay, so it looks like the card did come in handy, kind of. We would have passed anyways, I guess. All right, so we'll move back in here. And from here, we're going to move into the cellar. Stairs leading to the cellar are slick, and they glisten with a thin layer of ice. The cellar seems to have been replaced with an underground network of icy tunnels and caverns. The cold chills you to the core. Four shroud, two clues, and it looks like uh, it is a victory location, so if we get those two clues, we'll gain an experience point. Definitely want to get that taken care of. And we take damage for going in there. We want both clues for the experience, even though we only need one. So it's going to be a four versus four. And a little nervous about going, you know, such an even check. Usually you want to be two ahead of the bag or ahead of the... Uh, test difficulty but oh that's an auto fail well it looks like we're gonna fail either way uh so yeah he exhausts i forgot to do that um is that it for us um draw a card because we have nothing that's going to help us investigate this so okay last chance that's useful um ends our turn and let's uh, ready duke and we'll draw our card for the round. Lucky, okay, this can help us get this clue. And we gain a resource. We'll add a doom to the agenda. And we'll draw our encounter card. And it looks like it is an enemy. Ravenous ghoul. Three combat, three health, and three evade. Pretty straightforward. One damage, one horror. Shouldn't be too hard to kill. The three health is kind of a, uh, annoying because it'll take two attacks minimum. But it is what it is. So we're going to attack it. Using our fire axe, it's going to be a 6 versus 3. If we hit it, uh, we can do 2 damage. And then we'll just be able to kill it with one more attack. Uh, and that is a cultist. Which, as we know, is a minus 1. So we succeed. So he takes 2 damage. We just need one more, which we can do with the fire axe. So um, we don't have any more resources. So we'll just commit an overpower to the test. Uh, to bring us back up to a 4. So... This should be decent, uh, decent chances to hit him here. So it'll be a um, four, is it? Uh, no, no. Um, you know what? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do the overpower. So it's going to be um, four versus three. And let's see, the chaos bag says, hopefully we didn't waste this card. So that's a tablet minus two. So we do fail, and because there's a ghoul at our location, we do have to take a damage, unfortunately. Not a big deal, but a wasted card, and we took a damage. That's probably uh, my bad. It should have been two above the test. That, that was just dumb on my part. So we're going to have to um, use Duke and then commit another overpower to ensure that we hit this thing. So this time it's going to be a six versus three. Being three above is uh, usually a comfortable place to be at. And let's see, we pull minus four. That's, uh, that sucks. That really sucks because we use Duke and we committed another card. <sighs> Frustrating. So we fail. This goes away. Damn. So end of turn, uh, Ghoul attacks us. Um... That means it's going to do a damage and a horror. And um, luckily, Silvestri can heal the horror at the end of the turn. So we'll just assign it to him. 
but we do end up taking a damage. Draw a card and okay, lucky rabbit's foot, I'll take that. And um Mythos Phase, we put a Doom, and then we'll draw an encounter card. And it is one of the new cards. It's a uh, Chill from Below. Test three willpower for each point you fail by. Discard a card at random from your hand. Oh my god. Taking damage if you can't discard. Okay. Well, our willpower is four, so that's not bad. Uh, four versus three. So if we fail by one, let's say, which is more than likely, uh, if we fail at all, then we just discard a card. That's not a problem. And this thing says uh, cultist. That's a minus one. So we get it. It goes away. Nothing happens. Thank goodness. Um, okay. What are we going to do with this guy? I think since we have a resource, maybe we'll hack him with the fire axe and commit. Well, then, but that card won't. Well, I guess we could use lucky. No, because then we need that resource for the fire axe. Um, let's do this. We'll use uh, last chance. It basically has uh, five well, uh, wild icons, minus one for each one in our hand, so two. Uh, and we'll use we'll spend a resource to gain two on the fire axe, so that'll give us plus four. So that'll be a uh, six, six versus um, three. I mean, a minus four is unlikely. So, four versus three, or six versus three is a pretty decent odds here. Minus one, okay. Finally, we kill this guy. God, he's annoying. <laughs> Those three health monsters can be such a pain in the neck. Such a pain in the neck. So, Pete hacks it with the fire axe. And Peter Silvestri, uh, just, oh, I forgot to take this off of him uh, at the end of the round. So... He is just watching, uh, but he's he's very strong-willed. So uh, we're going to... I forgot to put the, <laughs> the tokens on that. So we're going to use one, take a horror, which will go to Peter, so that we can get another resource. Um, yeah. So he gets the horror, and um, we get a resource, which we're going to use to play our Lucky Rabbit's Foot. This will come in handy. We have a lot of skill cards in this deck, so playing Rabbit's Foot is very helpful. If we fail a skill test, we can draw a card, which will hopefully get us a skill card into our hand that will help us pass the next test. So definitely a helpful little tool for us to have right now. And we're going to use Duke to try and get this clue. Right now he'll put us at a 4 versus a 4. Not the most comfortable positions. Uh, 4 versus 4. And, oh, God, the auto fail. That's the second time. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Bad luck is starting to just drown us here. Wrecked by nightmares. Exhaust all assets I control. Uh, they can't ready, and it takes two actions to discard this card. Well, that's a pain in the neck. We don't have two actions this turn. Everything exhausts, and uh, we'll just uh, have to draw a card. Um, another lucky rabbit's foot. Okay. Wow, that's really annoying. Um, no bad guys, please. Whew. Test four willpower. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control, or take two damage if you can't. Crypt chill. Uh, so that that makes it a four versus a four. Let's see. Uh, that's an even check, but there's nothing I can do about it now. So let's see. Oh, right. Elder Sign. Although Duke doesn't ready because Rack by Nightmares prevents that from happening. Uh, that takes precedence over the Elder Sign effect, unfortunately. So we're ready and um, use this two actions to get rid of this. Man. So now uh, they still don't ready right away. We're gonna try and you and commit this for a three versus four test. That's so terrible. I, uh, basically, I'm grasping at straws here for a lucky pull. 
tablet. Yeah, that's a failure. That's a minus two. So we're going to use uh, Lucky. Fast, when you fail skill test, get plus two. So that actually puts us at one above, making us succeed. And we do get that clue. I had to use it. I was saving it for the Ghoul Priest. But I really need to get these clues as soon as possible. That agenda is going to advance very soon if I don't if I don't get moving. And then we'll be in trouble. This is starting to not go the way I wanted it to. <laughs> we started off pretty good, but things have uh, taken a turn here. Um, draw a card. Overpower. Okay, that'll definitely come in handy. Um, I'm sorry, Reckless Attack. Put a Doom and draw our next encounter card. Dissonant Voices. So it goes into our third area and we can't play assets or events. And it discards at the end of the round. Not the worst thing. Not the worst thing that we can get. <laughs> so four versus um, four. Come on. Oh, another Elder Sign. So Duke readies. And we get our final clue. And we get to ready Duke. So let's move in back in here. And get ready for the Ghoul Priest to arrive. So we'll draw... Uh, yeah, I keep forgetting to take away this thing. Draw a card. Quantum Flux. That can come in handy. A lot of our skill cards are in the discard pile. We'll spin our clues and advance the act. Now, it doesn't advance till the end of the of the round. So, uh, we draw a card. And that can come in handy as well. This this, this gets discarded. Uh, we ready. We gain a resource. And um, both the act and the agenda are going to advance. So, this is going to be kind of a little interlude here while we get all this set up. Here we go. Looks like we have to shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and we have to start discarding cards from the top until we get a ghoul and then we draw that enemy. So unfortunately, as we're summoning the ghoul priest, we're also going to have another ghoul enemy on top of us. Well, that's going to make things a little bit more difficult, but as long as we focus on the ghoul priest, we can ignore the other ghoul. They're getting out. You hear a crazed howl outside, and suddenly all creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down the doors and clawing at everything in their way. So any ghouls that spawn uh, moving forward are going to start moving, so they become hunters, basically. Breaking the barrier. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of the existence. A woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deerskin mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. What have you done? And we get to place Luda Chandler in the cellar. There she is. We can get her to help us. We also spawn the Ghoul Priest in our location. This guy is a beast, and he's going to be tough to beat. We had some cards to help deal with him. They kind of had to be used earlier, but we have a few others. A feral beast, roughly humanoid with a canine cast and hoofs for feet, tears through the ground in front of you. Below the floor, you can see vast tunnels beneath the house. Fiendish howling echoes from deep within the underground caverns. You're unsure what would happen if you tried to cross the threshold of the strange barrier. But based on its extreme heat, you sure as hell didn't want to try. If we can get to the parlor, we can also resign there. So that's actually a pretty 
handy little mechanic uh, in case we get in over our heads. The problem is we do have to get to the parlor and we currently have two creatures on us, including the ghoul priest who is not easy. <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll reshuffle this and pull our uh, random ghoul creature that is going to engage us. Um, I think my strategy here, initially I did want the um, fight or flight card for this uh, encounter, but unfortunately it got discarded. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Ghoul minion. That's not bad. <laughs> At least it's not something worse. So we draw that guy. Um, I do have some cards like the Reckless Attack, Inspiring Courage, um, you know, that can, that can actually help uh, hit this guy. I may be able to kill him without having to get Lita. I hope I'm not making a bad decision here, but I normally I would evade this guy. This is generally my strategy when fighting him, so he can't retaliate. But we're going to use Duke. We'll try to kill him straight on. So it's going to be a four versus four, and then let's go ahead and commit. Um, Let's commit Inspiring Courage, so if we succeed, we can ready Duke and use him again to attack this guy. So, this will bring us up to a 5. So, that'll be 5 versus 4. And just to make sure that we succeed, let's also commit Rise to the Occasion. This will give us a plus a 3 Wild Icon, so that'll bring us up to a total of 8. So, uh, 8, 8 versus 4. Um... I think um, being four over is more than enough. So let's see. And we get tablet. That's a minus two. So that we get it. We get it. So he takes two damage. We can ignore the ghoul minion that's on us. Because if we, um, if we kill the ghoul priest, we, we get to end this. So... Don't need to worry about killing the school minion. Duke readies because we succeeded the uh, check. And uh, we're going to use him again to attack. At a base of four against the ghoul priest. So four versus four. We're going to commit reckless assault to bring us back up to an eight. Once more, that'll make it in four over. So it's going to be an eight versus four. And the bag, come on, bag. Minus three, okay, perfect. I'm glad we were four over. Uh, so minus three, Ghoul Priest takes another two damage. Duke is just gnawing and biting at it and clawing at it. This Ghoul Priest is just taking some serious damage. Um, we're gonna now um, give a heart to, to Pete uh, so that we can gain a resource and maximize our fire axe. We will now chop up the ghoul priest with our fire axe uh, we will pump it with a resource bring us up to uh, and we're going to commit this um, quantum flux so this will bring us to a seven versus four another comfortable number to be at oh no oh no the worst thing we could have pulled right now Oh, man. That's an auto-fail, so... Oh, my goodness. Ghoul Priest retaliates, dealing us two damage and two horror. Two horror goes to Duke. Uh, two damage. We'll give one damage to Peter Silvestri, one damage to me. Silvestri dies. Oh, man. I think this kills us. This was our last action of the round. Because at the end of the turn now, after our turn's over, the ghoul will hit us for one damage, one horror. The ghoul minion. And... Yeah, the ghoul priest will attack me for two damage, two horror. Killing Duke. Um, yeah, two, so this, three horror, two damage, two damage, yep, that kills Duke, and then the regular ghoul minion is going to attack, K 
killing me. <laughs> so Pete goes down. He just gets uh, clawed to into unconsciousness by, and he's just left as a bloody mess there by the ghoul priest and this ghoul minion. Oh my goodness! Pete barely manages to escape his house with his life. The woman from the parlor follows him out the front door, slamming it behind her. You fools! You see what you've done! She pushes a chair in front of the door, lodging it beneath the doorknob. We must get out of here. Come with me, and I will tell you what I know. We are the only ones who can stop the threat that lurks beneath from being unleashed throughout this city. Pete is in no state to argue. Nodding, he follows the woman as she runs from her front porch out into the rainy street toward River Town. It seems Pete fell head over heels over Lita Chandler. <laughs> well, let's see how he does next time. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>